Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my June product roundup. It's already this time. I'm really excited. I feel like I found a lot of good products that I see myself using in every single one of my videos. <laughs> this roundup, I decided to create four different categories. So my top favorite products, my liked products, the just okay products, and the total misses. So before we get into today's video, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It would mean so much to me and let's get to it. So I want to start off this video with my top favorite products of the month, my most loved ones, the ones that I see me using all the time, time and time again. So the first one I want to talk about um, is my number one favorite of this entire month. The thing that I love the most is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I wish I got this sooner to be honest. I know people have been raving about this on the internet for years now and I don't know why I never picked it up. It is such a perfect product and you can use it in so many different ways. You can use it as a glow booster, you can mix it into your foundation to make it a little bit more glowy, you can use it as a highlighter or an underneath foundation highlighter. You can use it as a light coverage foundation. I did that once and it was a little too glowy for my taste, but maybe if you have like an, a drier skin type and you really want that ultra glowy look, maybe you'd enjoy that. Seriously, you guys, get ready to see this in a lot of my videos. It is such a worth it product for my routine. I just love the glow that it gives. It's quite a natural looking glow. It looks like a very when you wear it under foundation, that's my personal favorite way to use it. When it's under your foundation, it just gives that perfect glow from within look, but it also is quite intense at the same time. It's just a really stunning formula and I am super in love with it. I'm kind of considering picking up a different shade of it as well because I think this one's a little light, but here's the finish of it on its own. It is so beautiful. <laughs> This is definitely my favorite product of the month and I'm so happy I have it in my collection. So I highly recommend this product. If you had your eye on it for a while, it is totally worth it. I wish I got it sooner. Another product that I wish I got sooner is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Uh, I haven't been able to shut up about this this month. I've used it in pretty much all of my videos that came out this month. As you guys know, I usually hate setting my whole face with powder, but this powder has me doing that. It's crazy, but this is such a beautiful powder formulation. I'm wearing it all over my face right now, but you wouldn't even be able to tell that I'm wearing a powder. I just love how undetectable it is, and it allows you to glow so much through it. And I love how a tiny bit of it goes a super long way. It doesn't affect my foundations like all the other powders I've ever tried. I got a call, so I don't really know where I left off, but comparing this to the Milk Makeup Powder that I've been loving for the last probably year or so, um, this one, I still really like the Milk one, but this one is definitely superior. This just has all the qualities I never even imagined would be possible in a powder. I just love how it doesn't look like I'm wearing any powder at all. It just allows me to have more of a long lasting base, which is really great, but it still allows me to glow the way I want to. As you guys know, I love a glowy base and this powder allows me to still look like that, but it just really makes my makeup hold on a little bit more. And the packaging is so lovely. I love how it kind of contains it. So you don't waste a bunch of powder when you dip your brush and you have to tap a little bit off and it doesn't kick up anything. Just a little bit of powder dispenses at a time. I think the design of the packaging is really smart. Lesson learned, I should have listened to you guys way sooner than I did. Another one of my favorite discoveries this month are the Tower 28 glosses. These may or may not be my number one new favorite gloss formulation. These are incredible. They combine all of my favorite things about all of my clear glosses and glosses in general. They are super lightweight and I love the texture. It feels so soft and smooth, but it's so lightweight at the same time. There's no stickiness whatsoever. It almost feels more like a lip oil. Like if you are familiar with the Kosas lip oils, it feels like a more intense version of that, but it also combines my favorite aspects of the M Cosmetics Morning Dew Gloss and the Glossier Gloss, where it allows you to have that very pillowy glass-like finish to your lips. 
and they come in a variety of tones and they're the same across the board. Um, they have the exact same texture and finish as well. Uh, that can't be said for the Glossier ones, the ones that have a little bit of glitter in it or the red toned one, they kind of are more gloopy than the original clear one. So this is the way to go. If you're looking for a tinted gloss or a clear gloss, I would totally go for them because they are a really nice price point as well for a brand at Sephora. I've been totally in love with their brand uh, as of late, as you guys know, I recommend them all the time. Another huge plus for me is that it layers beautifully on a lot of lipsticks as well. Um, I've said this a few times, but the Glossier one, if you layer it on some lip products, I find that it kind of gets gloopy. This has no problem getting layered on top of any lip product, which is a dream. A huge dream. These are incredible. My two favorites are the clear one and the red one. I have the orange one but I haven't been wearing it as much as the red one. I just adore the tone of it. Um, it's really pretty but yeah these are my two favorites so far. Last thing I almost forgot they're also clean beauty so like how could it get any better in my opinion? I can't. These are amazing and I'm so happy I was able to finally get my hands on them. I've been looking at these for a month and they're always sold out so Keep your post notifications on. I really hope you saw that one fly. So it's really <laughs> weird. But keep your post notifications on if you have been wanting these. They post about them every time they relaunch at Sephora and stuff. So the next product I fell in love with this month is the Marc Jacobs At Lashed Mascara. I really love the name. It's very clever. First of all, the packaging is super, super cute and very classy looking. I just adore it. I feel like I love every single thing about this mascara. Um, my number one favorite thing about it though is the brush. It is a very nice size brush. I feel like a lot of mascaras lately have like the biggest brushes and it just doesn't really make sense to me because it makes it so much harder to apply. But this brush is nice and thin and it also comes to a nice point. So it's really easy to get into those inner lashes and really define each one and coat them evenly and the formulation is beautiful because it adds a lot of volume and a lot of length at the same time so this is all of the qualities i look for in mascaras so this one made its way up into my favorites right next to my pat mcgrath fetish eyes mascara and the ilia mascara it's just a really great formulation i was nervous the first time i used it because i think i touched my eye accidentally because i was experiencing flakes but i tried this all month long and i have had absolutely Absolutely no issue. That one I would highly recommend as well if you've had your eyes on it. The next product that I completely fell in love with is this First Aid Beauty Niacinamide Brightening Cream. This is an eye cream and I love to use this under makeup. I never really found an eye cream that I truly loved under makeup as much as this one. I am so happy I discovered this one. It is so good. It has a little like shimmery tint to it. I wonder if I can swatch on eye cream let me see if that's the thing it has like a shimmer running through it so it physically brightens but at the same time controls the oil production around my eyes because it has niacinamide in it which is amazing for the summertime because the area around my eyes for some reason gets really oily during the hotter months but here it is on my hand you can kind of see i always thought it kind of was a similar glow to the charlotte tilbury <laughs> hollywood filter but it is so nice under makeup and it doesn't react weird with any of my concealers or nor does it make my concealers crease at all i've experienced nothing it's like i'm not even wearing an eye cream under there but it just has so many benefits so this one gets an a plus plus from me i love it so so much and the last products i have in my top favorites category are the new nude sticks extension colors of the nudies i already adore this formulation so much so i always welcome new colors i especially love nude peach and terracotta tan they're just such nice summery classic tones for me i love peachy tones of course that's like all the blushes i use and of course i love these more beachy ones as well salty siren and beach babe here i'll swatch a few of the tones on my arm i love the tones that they always come out with they're so natural and pretty i just adore them so much so here's bubbly baby and here's terracotta tan nude peach beach babe and salty siren uh yeah i just love them all 
So now let's move on to the next category, my liked products. So these are the ones that I like, but I don't super love or I don't see myself using them as much as the ones I was just talking about. So the first one is the Ilia bronzer in the shade Drawn In. I use this a few times and it is a really nice bronzer. It's just not uh, unique enough for me, I guess. Like it doesn't stand out to a lot of my other bronzers. I feel like it's quite basic of a bronzer. There's nothing super revolutionary to it, but I do still see myself using it a lot. Uh, it is a really nice formula. It's nice and buildable. The color is beautiful. I just find that it's similar to a lot of brands, but it's nice because it is clean beauty and there aren't that many clean beauty bronzers that are really effective, um, especially in the powder department. So this is a good option if you're moving towards like a clean beauty routine. I do still really recommend this one, but I just don't find it to be super unique or or that it stands out a lot in my collection. I love the packaging though. I love how sleek and neutral it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> the next product is this Color Veil Gel Blush from Illamasqua. This is the one shade that I have. It's in the shade Enamor, and it's like a nice peachy neutral tone. It's very, very light. I really like this. It is a bit messy. It is a really fun texture. It's like a jello -y gel. It's really cool. And it's really nice and cooling when you apply it, which is really unique. But I don't find that it's quite unique enough compared to a lot of my favorite cream blushes, but I do still see myself keeping this around. It kind of gives a similar effect to the NARS liquid blushes once they're on the cheek. It's just more of a thicker consistency. It is a lovely product. It's just a little bit messy for my taste and I don't find it to be as unique as other cream products that I know and love so much. And the last one for this category is the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. I love how there's no alcohol in this one. That's very rare for a setting spray. I will say, please spray this on before you do your eyeshadow or block your eyes off if you're going to spray it after your eyeshadow just because I made that mistake and it screwed up my eyeshadow. I think there's a lot of glycerin in this product and it just made my eyes crease like crazy. That's the only bad experience I've had with this. I do really love the atomizer. It is super fine. Like once you apply it to your face, it doesn't feel like anything. And it has a very light scent. Like there's a lot of setting sprays that are heavily, heavily, heavily scented, but this one isn't crazy. I do wanna test this out a little bit more because I haven't had too many days that I wore my makeup for a very long period of time. So I don't know how well it is as a setting spray. I feel like I don't know how it compares to the Urban Decay one. Just in longevity, not ingredient wise, because this one ingredient wise is a lot better because it doesn't have alcohol at all. I do really enjoy it. I think it's a fun experience. It feels nice. So a beautiful mist. So I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted on this one. I don't know my final thoughts, I guess. Now let's move on to another category, and this is the just okay category. So I first wanted to talk about the Milk Makeup, um, what is this called? The Kush Triple Brow Pen. I love the effect, and the first time I used it, I was like, wow, this is great. Um, I think it's a very unique approach to product. It has like three little prongs, and it's really unique, and it creates really nice uh, brow-like strokes if you are very cautious when you're using this because if you apply too much pressure it creates these really thick really bad looking lines I don't know if you can even see but it, it just looks very unnatural so you really have to be careful with the pressure so it's a little bit more tedious and kind of awkward to use because you have to like hold it on a little specific angle to get the angle of the three little forky things if you're looking for a product like this, I think the Glossier Brow Flick or the MAC Shape and Shade products are a little bit more easy to use and a little bit more user friendly. This is a little bit harder to navigate. And also I didn't notice, but because this is a felt tip and it doesn't have one of those shaker things, so I feel like this is gonna dry out super, super quickly. Like even throughout this month of trying it out, I feel like it doesn't have its juice anymore. So it's not my favorite, it's just okay. The next product that was just okay was this Ilia lipstick in the shade Amber Light. This is the first uh, lipstick from them that I've tried, so I don't know if it's the same across the board, but I found this formulation to be a little bit drying on my lips and a little tuggy when I was applying it. It was a little bit uncomfortable. The color is beautiful and I do still see myself using this, but altering it with a little bit of balm underneath if I still want it to seem a little bit more of a satin finish or with gloss on top to make it more comfortable. I just found it to be a little too drying for my taste. 
And the last product in this section is the Stupid Love Palette from House Labs. The first time I used this, I mostly used the mattes and I was completely in love with them. And that's the only reason why I will be keeping this product is because of the matte formulation. This one especially, because this is a really unique shade to my collection personally. I don't really have many eyeshadows that color. Oh, I just swatched it over the Hollywood Flawless Filter, but it is very pigmented and very smooth and it, it works amazingly on the eyes. The reason why I'm hesitant about this is because the shimmers in here are so inconsistent. The one that I used in my first video using this right here, this uh, a thousand dove shade was really nice but then I started looking at it more closely and this shade right here Babylon is really weird it is uh, very gritty on its texture I really hope I can I'm gonna zoom you it up so you can hopefully see I don't know it has a really weird sandpapery texture and it doesn't have a really nice payoff. A lot of the shimmers, they're either dry as the Sahara Desert or very wet feeling. And the more wet ones, they don't apply evenly at all. Here, I just swatched that one. It looks kind of even on camera, but there's it's super streaky and a very uneven and chunky and it doesn't sit on the eye nicely. It just makes it look like you have really dry eyelids and you've tried to put an eyeshadow over top. So for that reason, I don't know. I will only be keeping this for the mattes for the days where I want to do a colorful look and I kind of take multiple palettes out just for specific shades. I would maybe hold off from this. The mattes are amazing. All the shimmers are kind of not the best. And the palette is mostly shimmers so not my fave sadly i was really hopeful but what can you do i don't like it and now moving on to my total misses of the month so the first product was this first aid beauty ultra repair tinted moisturizer i've tried this twice the first time i used it was on camera and it was really unsuccessful it looked horrible and i did use it with a brush that day with a primer underneath just to see that didn't work out and it is a tinted moisturizer so I should have put it on with my hands but I did try it on with my hand and the result was the exact same it was very texture enhancing and it kind of balled up and it was just really weird it made my skin look like I had dried skin and it just is not good I sadly it's a really huge miss for me I will be getting rid of this for sure I don't have too much to say about it only that it does not perform the way it should <laughs> um the next total miss for me was the Carna Laure primer this is a stunning looking product but it is hand sanitizer with gold flakes and heavy perfume that's this product it is not a beneficial product for your skin at all look at even like i didn't see any beneficial things that happened under my foundation with this underneath except that it just is super perfumed so it's just not a good product and it's way too overpriced another one that was a complete miss for me was the nyx can't stop won't stop concealer this is the most drying concealer i have ever tried i have not tried it since the first video i used this because it was so uncomfortable and drying it literally felt like it dehydrated my under eyes so badly to the point where it was like a little raisin under here it was really bad and you could see the edges where it was not able to blend out it was so dry that you couldn't like fix the edges or anything like that it was just a total miss I really wanted it to work but sadly it's not for me and the last one I don't know where my physical component went but it is the Illamasqua OMG highlighter I feel like I used it twice I might have just used it the one time in that video this highlighter was the most texture enhancing and drying highlighter I have tried it highlighted all of my skin texture and it was really unflattering and it was a super artificial looking strip on the cheeks and you couldn't blend it out nicely because once you place the brush with the product on your face it would stick to any moisture and it would not budge it was the most dry thing ever 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 so i would not recommend that either but those are all the products i feel like i did exclude a few of the products that i tried out this month because i didn't have any different experiences from my first impression that is all from me and this month's product roundup i really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful if you did please give it a like it would help me out so very much i will make sure to link all of the products in the description down below as always and i will catch you guys in the next one love you bye